Hey everybody, this is Tanner Steed. Today we're going to be talking about three of my favorite brush types for still life painting. This is not sponsored, but all of my brushes that I'm going to be talking about today are all from one company. It's the infamous Rosemary & Co. Brush Company. They are incredibly responsive. They, I have so many brushes from this company and the quality is just top notch. They are really unmatched, and I mean that. I'm specifically going to be talking about still life painting today. There are so many different brushes on that website, you should definitely go, go check out all of them. But of all of those categories, these are my three favorites. When I begin a still life, this is a, a work in progress that I haven't started painting. I generally like to start out with vine charcoal. I will draw out the big shapes of the scene and then from there I'll add uh, pencil lines which will not wipe away as easily as the charcoal will. Also in those early stages I will begin by wanting to build up texture immediately. So generally I like to have texture in my lights, um, in the light shapes rather than the shadow shapes. That's kind of a traditional method. And the reason for this is the physical texture of the paint will actually uh, catch more light and bounce that light into your eyes at a higher level if there's a brush stroke, whereas if it were just very thinly applied and scumbled in. So um, I want to be able to build up that texture immediately. So that brings me to my first brush type. And that is the Ivory Series. So this is an Ivory Long Filbert. Uh, they come in a variety of different shapes. Uh, the Filbert is nice because if you turn it on its side, it is similar to a round. You can get a nice straight line. And then you can also get a more square shape brush stroke. The reason why I like to use this brush in the early stages is because it really does pick up a lot of paint. It holds it like somewhere in between a hog bristle and a synthetic brush. So maybe not quite as much as a hog bristle, but definitely a lot being a synthetic brush. Uh, if you are worried about your brushes being vegan, these are vegan. No animal hair whatsoever, but it still holds a lot of pigment, which is the benefit of using a natural haired brush. Now, this is a long filbert. I prefer the long ones, uh, especially at the early stage, because you can actually collect more paint off of your palette and load the brush for a longer time, making it so you don't have to dip your paintbrush into the paint as often. It's actually best to not, to try your best not to cake up the paint up into the ferrule of the brush, because it, that's the hardest part to clean. So having a longer bristle will actually prevent you from getting paint stuck in close to the ferrule. These come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Uh, this is the, the filbert. Let's see, over here I have a flat, which has that nice square tip. These are really nice. They, they kind of have a snap to them. They bend pretty much in the, in the center. You, you can feel kind of a snap. You can get a, a nice firm quick brush stroke. They're not one to splay out and kind of make a soft, less defined mark. I know an artist that likes to use these is Kwang Ho. He likes to create a ton of variety in his brush strokes, so he uses many different brushes, and this is one of his main ones. Um, this is actually from his pack, the, the Kwang Ho set pack I bought a while back. And yeah, I like to use these in the early stages when you're trying to load up a bunch of paint, throw in clay on the wheel so you can sculpt, right? You want to get a ton of paint on the canvas so you can start to manipulate values and manipulate colors. Great for the early stages. I use this brush all in the background in the curtains because I wanted the curtains to appear more light. So I wanted a more, a chunky, more of a chunky brush stroke, whereas in these darks, um, I didn't use them, I used a different kind of brush to make sure that it didn't produce too much of a brush stroke. Now, you can use these in any area, and that actually leads me to uh, my next brush to help compensate for some of the 
intense brush strokes that you might get with this one. Now this could be one of my, no, 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 no. This is one of my favorite brushes. This thing is, I use it in absolutely every single painting. It's not really one that you would use to apply paint. You can use it to apply paint, but it's to manipulate the clay once it's on the, the surface, as in manipulate the paint once it's up there. Sometimes I'll be going along with my ivory uh, brushes and I'll lay in a huge brush stroke and I'll be really satisfied with it because it's in the light. But then I use it in a darker area and I'm like, oh man, that was way too chunky. That was, it's uh, distracting. The glare that's uh, coming off of the brush strokes is changing the way the value is appearing. Well, that's where this brush comes in. This is the uh, Rosemary & Co. Series 135. It's rubbed off because I've used it so much. So this actually used to be splayed out a little bit larger, but I've used it so much that it started to come apart. Now to save that, I actually just super glued it back into the ferrule. Um, I'm going to need to reorder some of these and maybe I'll get a variety of sizes because I've really only used this number four. Um, but it is incredible. I can not only knock down brush strokes or eliminate the glare, it also grabs the paint in such a way that it isn't a scratchy appearance like some other fan brushes may have. It grabs everything in such a way that it just jostles it slightly. And it's a really unique feeling that I absolutely recommend that every single artist has this uh, in their paint box. This is an essential brush in my opinion. So this is not a vegan brush. This is made with male and female badger hair. Now to point to just one spot in this painting uh, that I use this brush would be kind of ridiculous because I, I used it in every single spot on this canvas. I certainly used it in all of the shadow areas on all of the leaves that are in shadow and um, all over where this this couch is. I knocked down the brush strokes and I can even see areas where some of these leaves are softened into the background. You can use it both in like a knocking knocking down way or you can you know poke at the canvas it just really depends and there are so many niche situations that I can't just limit this to one use all I can say is that you need to go get this brush you must have this and I'll definitely put a link to all of these brushes uh, down in the description a specific use would be let's say you're painting a vase and you need an even gradation from light to medium to dark like a sphere well, this brush can be used to blend in such a subtle way um, that you are, you have a choice. You can create a brush stroke or you can make it so there is absolutely no brush stroke in between the planes of this sphere that you're creating or the planes of a vase. All right, so you've blocked in your painting with your ivory filbert. You've knocked down your dark brush strokes with your series 105 fan brush. Now it's time for the fine details. Your paint may have dried, the first layer may be dry and you're working on minute renderings, maybe in the petals, um, and you're trying to create very, very subtle gradations of form. That's where this last brush comes in. This is the Rosemary & Co. Eclipse Extra Long Comber. Now it's extra long, so you are not likely to get a bunch of paint stuck in the ferrule. So this brush is actually vegan friendly. It's synthetic, which I am actually shocked to learn this because it looks like mongoose hair. And it even says on the website that it's for those of you who like mongoose hair style, the old style of brush. It's such a nice brush because it actually doesn't pick up a ton of paint and it doesn't deposit a ton of paint. So you have a ton of control with this brush. You can try and load it up um, and make really sharp marks. That's definitely possible, but it's not the way that I like to use these. I like to make minute adjustments, uh, especially in 
the petals of a rose. So we are working on the final stages of this painting. Um, I'm using my Eclipse Extra Long Comber during these final stages. I'm working on minute controlled value changes uh, and subtle temperature shifts. So on all of these roses, all of the subtlety that you're seeing going from plane to plane and the shifting form was all manipulated using my extra long cobra. It's about having control at this stage. I'm not using it to make any dramatic shifts. I'm just scumbling and glazing in very, very soft shifts between form changes. And this painting is going to be available on my website once it's completed. I am so close to finishing it and I just have just a, a few adjustments to do and I'll be signing it and putting it up there. So make sure to go to my website, tannersteedart.com to check out what paintings I have available. Both this one and the rose that was behind me earlier in the video are going to be available on that website. These come in a variety of different sizes and shapes. I for one like to use the extra long comber where it's like a flat edge and I have all different sizes for them. I have them really small. This is a quarter inch all the way up to a half inch size. I think they go up larger, but that's the largest that I have. It's a great brush for those final adjustments and this is what I am using in those final stages of a painting. So if you're like me, you will immediately be going to Rosemary & Co's website and you can geek out looking at all the different brush types. There's so much to choose from. There are uh, brush sets to, to check out. And I encourage you to at least try the three that I mentioned today. So that's the Ivories, the Ivory series. That's the Master's Choice Series 105 uh, fan brush. And last, but certainly not least, it's the Extra Long Combers. Go check those out. And if you don't know where to start with brushes, just get a few of each and you will be guaranteed to have a good time with those. It's a great place to start if you're painting still lives. All right, so make sure you comment down below and let me know if there's a brush type that you use frequently and you're shocked that it wasn't on my top three list. I look forward to hearing from you guys and I really appreciate your support. We're almost at a thousand subscribers, so let's keep it going. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Uh, we are growing and posting more frequently than ever. So thanks for being here. I'll see you next time.